Let's talk about real life issues Love and relationships Let's have a good time with the missus The missus, so let's yeah Let's talk about celebrities Let's talk about caring events Let's talk about things you don't see On regular TV So join in on G And in order for y'all to do what God is calling y'all to do, to take y'all platform, to for it's a plateau and it can go to levels that you never seen, don't best believe it's gonna come with devils. You know what I'm saying? Every time I speak, I want to shiver. You know, I don't want them to be like they know what I'm gonna say because it's polite. But I know if I keep talking about how dirty it is out here, somebody gonna clean it up. Me, me and Jason. Me and Jason gonna clean it up. Hey y'all, it's your girl, the missus. The missus with the kisses, baby. Mm. What's good? What's good in the city? I know y'all like, wait a minute, hold the hell up. What is going on with the missus head? I know, I know, I know. One thing that if y'all knew to the missus, to Neil, Miss Peachy, whatever y'all would call me, one thing y'all need to know. I want y'all to listen good. I don't give a damn about changing my hair up. I really, this, I have been doing this for years. <laughs> my shit will be long one day, and it will be short as can be the next. And I don't care. Just as long as I look nice and pretty, that's all that matters, right? That's all that matters. That's all that matters. <laughs> so, again, thank y'all so, so much for joining tonight. We have a very, very, very special show tonight. Um when I tell you it's unbelievable, so unbelievable, so hurtful, sad, just everything above that you could think of. Um, but we're gonna get through it. We're gonna get through it. I think I got a little sinus issues. It ain't COVID. I know y'all be like, the missus always sick, but it's sinus allergies, are sinus, one of them. Okay, so we gotta pull up Jason. You know, we got to pull up Jason. You know, Jason, he he rocks with me on Wednesdays all the time. He's always here, unless he got something going on. But most of the time, he's here. Every Wednesday. Here he is. Here he go. Oh, Robert. Dang, not the boo. We are <laughs> You're here every day. Boo. Boo. <laughs> Jason, I'm so sorry. You know no, we love good. you. Shout out to Jason. Shout out to okay. Jason. Yeah, what up, though? How y'all doing? Welcome in. I see everybody in the building. We got Joyce, Cameron, uh, or excuse me, Carmen. We got y'all in the building. Hey, man, hit the like button. Hit the share button. You know what I'm saying? Hit a comment. Hit me with a what up, though, if y'all out there. Uh, I appreciate seeing y'all names in the chat. Now, one thing y'all got to go do if if you're watching this on your phone and you're like, man, sometimes this phone ain't just big enough. I'm like, my neck cramping, my fingers cramping, all those things. You can go over to Roku. Get your Roku TV remote. Go ahead and search engine. Go ahead and type in PTT time. That's time with a Y. And you can go ahead and pull us up on your big screen TV. So if you got that 65, that 75, that 85, you can get this whole story on uh on the big street now if like like we were saying last time peachy said if you got anything under a 55 oh, just watching on your said. phone peachy said. <laughs> just watching on your phone <laughs> just watching on your phone if you got if you got under a 55 just watching on your phone nonetheless man pull us up on roku that's right we're on on roku and uh you can search for us on peachy tea time and that's time spelled with the y we do have a very sad um but very eye-opening story um, again, this is a, a thing that the, the world still deals with and I don't get it, but domestic violence is something that continuously needs to be spoken about as yeah. much as possible. And, and this is what, this is where we at today. We'll be talking about some of that. So, uh, it's a blessing to have this young lady on talking about her daughter, uh, plural, right? Daughters. So 
right? So um, you guys embrace this young lady when she comes up, and then uh, come come join us, man. Now, before we get started, Carmen, hold on, wait, wait. Carmen says she that Carmen has said right. <laughs> She's I'm bad. Bad. I'm tired of Jason mispronouncing my dog all night. Hey, you know what? Look, blame the Detroit public schools. I see it how I see it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and not the Detroit public schools. I'm putting it all on DPS. You know what I'm saying? DPS all the way. I know that's right. And thank you, Carmen. I really appreciate it. You know, I try my best to look nice when I come on here. You got to present yourself very well. You got to. Can't come up here looking crazy. You got to present yourself. So Absolutely. thank you so Absolutely. much, love. Uh, and one more thing, one more thing before we get started uh, with Otisha today. Otisha Kardash is her name. Um, but before we bring her up, there's one more thing that I want to announce. Next Wednesday, okay? Next Wednesday. And I want y'all to hear me and hear me very well. Because this is very important. Next Wednesday. It's my birthday, baby. It's my birthday. It's my birthday. I'm going to need y'all to go ahead and call me. Tell me happy birthday. That's all I want. If you want to give me a birthday blessing, that's fine too. I'll accept it. It ain't going to do nothing to go towards PGT time. But I'll accept it. (laughs) But most importantly, all I want you to do and all I'm asking is for you to call in, wish me a happy birthday, and watch our fantastic show that we got. For y'all next Wednesday, we're going to have a ball, okay? We are going to have a ball. You will see this flyer. It's going to get on y'all nerves. I, I don't care because I love it. Shout out to Fred. Shout out to Fred. <laughs> Fred getting tired of me. Y'all know he is. I just hope he don't quit no time soon. That's all I can say. You but quit, I love man. you, Fred. You Thank quit. you for all that you do. I really appreciate you. I really do. Okay, now that we got that out the way, let's bring up Altisha, okay? Let's bring up Altisha, baby. Girl, we calling you. We calling you. (laughs) Hey, Altisha. Thank you again for joining us tonight. How you feeling right now? Um, I'm doing. You doing? All right. Well... Before we get started, Otisha, let me let everybody know how I found you. I ain't going to say everything, but I'm just going to say just a little bit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I saw Otisha on another platform. That's what I'm going to say. I saw Otisha on another platform. Um, It was totally different from my platform, but I did see her on there. And when she was on that platform, um, she mentioned that she had lost two daughters to domestic violence and also to gun violence. And um, when she told part of the story, she didn't tell it all, uh, she told part of it and my heart just went out to her. So this platform that she was on, she had no choice but to get leave her um, her IG handle. So <laughs> when she left that baby, I was waiting. I was like, I know she got to leave the IG handle. She got to. So when she left her IG handle, that's when I went ahead and I slid on in her DM, baby. I saw <laughs> it. <laughs> and I asked her to come and join us tonight. And she didn't hesitate at all. She was very, very um, honored to come. She was thankful and everything. And vice versa. I was honored for her to come. I was very thankful that she was able to trust me with her daughter's story because again this is nothing 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 to play around with at all um i knew that it could bring awareness um to our black community and also to peachy tea time viewers so i wanted to make sure that otisha came on here and told her daughter's story and to keep her daughter's names alive you know what i'm saying so we're gonna go ahead and get started otisha first and foremost Um, Tell everybody about your two beautiful daughters Um, as far as how was they when they was little. Let's start from the beginning, girl. Um, I'm going to start with Jasmine because she was my oldest. Um, She was born July the 31st, 1996. Um, She was like the most perfectest child you have ever seen in your life. She was just beautiful. Like 
she she was not only beautiful on the outside, she was beautiful on the inside. She had a very beautiful spirit and soul. Um, a lot of people say she reminded them of me. Um, oh. Yeah, she was just she was just beautiful, like a beautiful being, um, beautiful child, a beautiful teenager. And then she grew into a beautiful woman and, um, she loved her children, she, two boys, Grayson and Major. Um, her whole life just revolved around just taking care of her children, making sure they got to school, making sure they ate. Um, when I looked at her, she reminded me of me raising them up i always okay. taught them um before anything you need to serve god and you need to be a great mom um because when you're small kids remember how their moms raised them up that's the first thing they always remember um and that's just what, that's just what jasmine did she was raising her boys up to be great men and and it's not gonna stop because I'm I'm taking up where she left off, and I'm gonna make sure that happens. Um, my baby Jamie, um, she was born November of 2000. I gotta think, 2000. Yeah, <laughs> I got a lot of I got a lot of kids, so I have to think. <laughs> <laughs> I had ja I have Jamie and Jasmine, and I also have four other children. So. Okay. Um, I have to just think about their dates, but Jamie was, um, she was undescribable. I always call her mama cat because I don't know why, but she always seemed like the oldest of my children and she was my third born. <laughs> um, I don't know if you ever been around sisters and the youngest one always acts like the oldest one. Uh -huh. that, that was her. She just always took control. Um, she was she was just way before her time, way before her time. I always told her she she was twenty when she passed away, but I always told her she reminded me of like a thirty thirty five year old person. Um, her intelligence, um, her strength, just everything about her. Um, she had one daughter, Tylee, who she loved to death. We're going to get through this, Otisha. We're going to get through time. this. Take your time. Take your time. Yes, please take your time. Okay, y'all. So, Otisha had two girls. She had six in total. Uh, but her two daughters basically was murdered. They was murdered. Uh, we're going to put up some pictures. And this one is, I, I already told her, Tisha, she's going to have to help me with the picture because I put, bad, bad. They look alike. Okay. <laughs> they look alike. So this one is Jasmine. That is Jamie. That's Jamie. See, I knew I was going to get it mixed up. <laughs> this one is Jamie. That's Jamie. And, and that's Jamie. That's Jamie again. That's Jamie again, y'all. So let's see. And that's Jasmine. That's Jasmine. We got the Jasmine. <laughs> this is Jasmine. Again, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful girls. Beautiful girls. Um, Otisha, take us back, okay? Let's just go back for a second. When Jasmine and her boyfriend was dating, correct? It's Jasmine's right. boyfriend. Okay. Right. And how long have they been together, you said? Six years. Okay, six years. And you was aware of this relationship, correct? I was. I mean, I was. six years, that's a long time. So I knew you was aware of it. What type of gentleman was this guy? Um, Before just, any of the abuse came in the picture. Just really, really, really quiet really quiet barely talked if he was talking he was talking to jasmine he would just look at you not really any conversation he was just really really quiet and he smiled a lot i remember that about him um he was just fascinated with jasmine 
um, like he would go to work and as soon as he got a break, he would come see what Jasmine was doing. And now when I look back, I know that that wasn't normal, but. And it's strange that you say that because you're not the first family that came on for domestic violence. And that's one of the things that they all have said, Otisha, was that they was very quiet. Right. Very quiet. Um, have you had any interaction with him as far as negative between you and him? I have. Um, the last time me and him got into it, um, we had some words because Jasmine told me he had hit her. But she didn't tell me. She told Mimi. That's Jamie. And Jamie told me, and I told him that he better not put his hands back on her. And he kept telling me he didn't, but I know he was lying. You know, we, we had words and um, the police was called. Um, and that's basically the last thing I remember about him. Me telling him to come back to my home. <sighs> Now, they did live together, correct? He would be back and forth between there and his mom's house. Um, Jasmine uh, kept trying to go get a restraining order, so he wouldn't be able to come to her house. Um, but the county where she was living in, they wouldn't, they wouldn't do the restraining order for some reason. Um, I'm never going to understand that. He just, he just never would take no for an answer. One time I tried to sit him down. I was like, um, you know, maybe you and Jasmine need to take a break. And, you know, you go, you go stay at your mom's house permanently. And, you know, y'all just give each other a breather. And he told me, um, I can't do that. I'm too old to be living with my mama. Um, it was just. I don't know. He was now when I look back at it, he was a very, very disturbed individual. Individual. Okay. Uh, approximately how many fights do you think that they actually have been in? I mean, I'm sure they had a certain point that they were good, correct? They did. They did. Um, but it, there, there were numerous. Um, I would find out about them on the back end. Like I said, she would never really tell me directly what was going on, but she would always tell Jamie. Okay. Okay. Me, uh, my the computer messing up. There we go. Okay. So, were they? And I'm trying to ask questions that, you know, I would think that others would have that's watching this show. Because right. they had two kids together, correct? Yes, ma'am. Was any fighting going on when she had the first one before the second one? I want to say it was. It's, it, it, I think I, the, the fighting started kind of like, immediately after their relationship started because I can remember like when she first met him um he was just I think getting out of a relationship with somebody else who had just had a baby by him and the baby ended up passing away um I think the baby was one years old and I want to say he was I don't know I don't know for sure whether he was still dealing with the other girl or not, but I know that there would be arguments about what was going on with that. But um, the fighting really, really started after the second child was born. After the second child was born. Okay. Um, let's get into our first clip, okay? We're going to get into our first clip, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about that. So here we go. We got to get into our fair usage first, y'all. Here we go. 
Warning! Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use and is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe a copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. Well, today we have learned the name of the man Lexington County deputies say killed two sisters. Investigators say Tyrone Durham Jr. killed Jamie and Jasmine Green yesterday before killing himself. Our Nick Neville spoke with neighbors who are still trying to process what happened. The Richland County Coroner's Office just hours ago confirmed the identity of the suspected gunman in this case as 27-year-old Tyrone Durham Jr. A look at his criminal history shows some troubling signs. How many times do people have to constantly try to go and seek help and can't get it, and it's two lives have to be lost for people to wake up, for the police to wake up, for the law to get involved, for help to get done. Latonya Seawright's heart aches for the victim's family. Records show Durham, the suspected gunman, had multiple arrests, including a domestic violence charge. It's like a big cloud over our neighborhood. It's a sad, sad situation. Domestic violence is so serious, and I so hate that that happened to that family. And I hate that two lives was lost yesterday. He was charged with assaulting a police officer while resisting arrest in May of 2016. Earlier that year, he was charged with assault and battery in the third degree. Records show that case was still pending before the Criminal Domestic Violence Court. Jasmine had two boys, and Jamie had a daughter. Seawright says her daughter knew one of the victim's daughters, and she's praying for the victim's mother. And just talking about it, it gets me choked up because I can't even fathom how she feels. And my heart deeply, deeply aches for her and the family. My heart aches for the children that don't have their moms. The Lexington County Sheriff's Department says tonight that prior to yesterday's shooting on Woodcote Drive, there were two calls for service associated with this address, both on the same day in March of this year. Reporting in Lexington County, McNeville, WIS. All right, Otisha. Now, I fixed my computer. It was me, Jason. I apologize. Because <laughs> Jason been going up and down trying to figure out what's going on. I'm asking, Otisha, can you hear Jason? I ain't saying too much about me. Can you hear Jason? So, Jason, uh. I apologize. But uh, it was my fault. I figured it out. But, Otisha, take us back to the day that everything happened. Um, let's start with that. Let's start with the morning. Um... That morning, um, I was not home. I had caught an Uber somewhere and I left my car there um, because Jamie needed the car. Her car was in the shop. Jasmine um, didn't have a car. Um, so I left the car there for Jamie. Um, when I left the house, um, Jamie was there. My daughter, my granddaughter, Jasmine, my two grandsons, um, my 13 year old daughter was there and my, um, then 17 year old son was there. Um, Jasmine was taking, um, summer. That's my 14 year old, my, my 13 year old. She was taking her to school. Summer said that when, um, uh, she was getting dressed, she said that she heard, Tyrone knocking on the door and she said Jasmine went to the door and told him to get away from the door. Um, and they were arguing at the door. She said he kept calling Jasmine's phone over and over. Um, she said when her and Jasmine went outside to get in the car, he had them left. And Jasmine took her on to school. My son said that he um, left out the door. He said he went to the bus stop. He said he forgot something, but he was so scared. I was going to fuss at him for, <clears throat> for missing the bus. So he didn't go back and get it. But he said when he got on the bus and he rode past the house, 
He said he saw Tyrone pulling in the driveway, pulling back up in the driveway. Um, my neighbor, um, she has a ring camera. Um, I didn't have any cameras up and I, every house I move in now, I have to have cameras. But I know that to me, God saves you from different things. And when you think about it later, you realize that was the purpose of it. Um, because if I would have had the cameras up, I would have saw exactly what happened to my girls. And that probably would have just gave me a heart attack. But my neighbor, her camera caught the front of my house. And till this day, I think my neighbor saw everything that happened, but she didn't want me to see it. So she erased it. Because like I said, God do certain things to protect your heart when stuff like this happens because the, the extensity of it will make you have a heart attack. Um, but on her camera, you can see Jasmine pulling back up from dropping Summer off um, when she got out of the car. I don't know where Tyrone came from, but he pulled right in behind her. I don't know whether he saw her somewhere or started following her, but he pulled right in to see them arguing in the yard. Um, and then you see him like snatch her phone and run in the house. Um, and this was your house, correct? Yeah, this was my house. Um, at the time I've since moved away from there and I regret it to this day because, um, that house made us happy. That was my, my family's home, but you know. When death occurs and you have children, you can get through it because you're an adult. I'm not going to say get through it, but you can handle it better. Mm -hmm. But children, they don't understand, especially teenagers. I'm not going to say my grandkids because they're still little. It was my teenagers. And um, it just really got their minds all messed up. So I don't want to take them through that. So we moved. But... They were at my house and um, Jamie was in my bed. Um, I had three bedrooms upstairs and I had one bedroom. The master bedroom was downstairs when you come in the house. Um, my 23-year-old daughter, um, Lateria, she was on the phone with Jamie. And she said, Jamie uh, said, they're in, here, they're in here fighting and arguing again and mama don't want him in the house. Um, my 23 year old said she heard Jamie get out the bed and go in there. And she said, Jamie said that, um, Tyrone, you got to get out of here with this. My mama don't want you in here. You and Jasmine in here arguing and fighting. And he was like, um, B, I'm not going anywhere. And Jamie was like, you're getting out of here, get out of here. And he was like, Jasmine was on the phone with a, with a guy and, and Jamie was trying to tell him that the number in Jasmine's phone was a number she called off of because she was locked out the house and she needed Jasmine to open the door, but Jamie's phone had went dead. So she used her friend's phone and she was telling the truth because Jamie called me off the phone to tell me that the door was locked, but him and Jamie started arguing. He kept, I guess he was, trying to fight Jasmine and that's when the fighting started. Um, my neighbor across the street said he heard a bunch of gunshots. Um, he said he looked out the door and he saw Tyrone speeding off and he said he looked back at my house and he said, it, he said, it looks like somebody's laying in the yard. Um, he said he called his mom cause she had just, he said she just had pulled off like five minutes ago. And, um, so she turned back around. She's a, a registered nurse. She said she sped back up. She said she saw my kids laying in the yard. Um, one of my daughters was laying in the yard. Um, the other one was laying like in the doorway. Um, she said that she checked both of them for pulses. She said they was gone. I asked her over and over. I was like, were they still alive? Are they still moving? Mm. She was like, no, Tisha, they was gone. Um, Jasmine, she died from one gunshot wound. 
shot her once and he shot Jamie um, five times. Now, Jasmine, not to cut you off, but I just want to make sure everybody understands this. Jasmine was Tyrone's girlfriend. Right. He shot her one time. Right. The argument was amongst them. You know, he was upset with her about the phone. But he still only shot her one time. And then shot her sister, who was helping her five times. So like me and you spoke on earlier today, it seems as if he was very angry with Jamie. And Tisha, can you please express what you told me today about, uh, because I just want everyone to know this, who is going through domestic violence, about when you said when the person is angry with that person, can you tap in on that? I can. Um, usually, the situation in a in a criminal domestic violence situation, um, the person, the abuser, um, which was Tyrone, um, was abusing Jasmine by Jamie, her sister, protecting her. He wanted to fight Jasmine, but Jamie was protecting her. So usually, the abuser, which was Tyrone is usually mad at the person who's protecting the person who they want to abuse, which was Jamie. So by Jamie protecting Jasmine, he shot Jamie more times because I guess he was just mad because he couldn't get to Jasmine the way he wanted to. And Jamie intervened between it. Mm. I, I, I'm wondering, did, and we've asked these questions a little previously, uh, were there were there like any more signs? I know you probably see it now, right? Like, like, oh, those are the signs that we saw, and I we could tell. But could there could there be like any signs that you saw early on that that this could have gotten too out of hand from this young man? I when I look back, he was just. He was just one of them people in life that you just hope not to meet. Mm. And you would hope your daughters wouldn't meet him. Right, right. He you wasn't mute. right. His mind wasn't right. He hid it like very well. Um we would have family gatherings and then sometimes when I think of, when I think back now, sometimes when we had our family gathering, sometimes I just catch him just staring at us, like looking at us like we were like aliens or or something he'd never seen before. That and, part, that's what I'm talking. Yeah, yeah. And I think, uh, I think what made him the most upset with us was the love. Mm, mm-hmm. uh -huh. The love that I had for them. I don't think he ever had that. And he didn't like it. And he didn't like Jasmine having attention on her family more than him. Well, yeah, because it's it's like when I when I hear this, I, I my my spirit says this. I don't I'm not licensed in anything. I don't know anything, but my spirit, like I'm being downloaded, right? Like my spirit is saying, like People that are abusers, right, that are in this space, they don't like no one loving that person more than them. It's a jealousy thing. Like, it don't matter if it's your mama, if it whoever it may be, like no one can love you like I love you. Right. And that's the and that's the instance that this young man seems to to, you know, had occurrence of. But you you might be right, man. There might have been a lot of home issues that this young man didn't have. That that brought into his adulthood that fostered some real negative behaviors that weren't easily to obtain like right away like yo like mom intuition radars didn't pop off because like you say I think he had hit it well he knew how to just say enough but not say too much right exactly you know? have you met his family I have he had both parents in his life. <clears throat> 
Um, they both are there, but they're not together. Um, his dad is married um, to another woman. Um, I get along with them great. I talk to them. I invite them to the birthday parties because I've never, ever had a problem with them. And they didn't kill my children. Right. Exactly. We always had a good relationship. Um, when my girls first got killed, they they didn't say anything to me until maybe like a couple of months passed. They gave me time, and um, they, um, his father and his wife was just like they didn't know what to say to me. Um, what could they say to me? You know, right, his right. child killed my children. So, and I let him know that. He he killed my children, but you didn't. And I don't think at all he got any of his ways from you because you and him are like day and night. When I met his father, we like instantly got along. And I always would invite him and his wife to stuff because they were like genuinely good people and I could see it. Um, The mom, on the other hand, was him all the way. Was he an only child? He was not. His mom has three other boys. Um, who I pray every day won't following those footsteps. Because I see, I saw it in one of them. Um, I, I, the situation makes me mad. But my heart goes out to him because, like, as a mom, when your child is suffering from in, from mental illness, you're the first to see it. Mm, right, yeah. You're the first to see it. And as long as you block it out, the worse it's going to get. Facts. Facts. And we have to understand, y'all, this guy has been part of Otisha and her family life for six years. I was just about to ask that question. How long were they together? You know, so she knows him. You know what I'm saying? Um, we have a question in the comment. How do his his parents feel about this? Um, like I said, his dad, you know, he he knows what he did was wrong, and you know, he always him and his wife always trying to be there for me and make sure the boy's okay. But his mom, till this day, always points the finger at my girls. And I don't understand why. How, Sway? Uh, uh, uh. I don't understand why she thinks that her child did not do anything wrong. She brags about what a good father he was. She talks trash about my daughters. Um, from the moment she met Jasmine, she didn't like her. And I always told Jasmine, she don't like you because you're pretty. She just can't get over how pretty you are because you're doing nothing to her. Um, the day he killed my girls, she got on social media writing long paragraphs. Um, nobody knows what happened but them. Y'all need to stop pointing fingers at my son. Your son gunned down two, two helpless women. Like, exactly. Can, can you justify that to me? I, you, you'll never be able to justify that to me because a gun against two women with, with, with nothing? I, I, I can't see that. I'm sorry. Wow. No, I, I um, let me get into this question right here. This story, you guys, took a turn. Um, yeah. it, it took a twist. I say that. And Bonnie Hobbs said, "Where is he at?" Well, y'all, he was a coward. He killed himself. That's what he did. Self-inflicted wound. They found him in the car um, the same day, correct? Um, they found him. Um, he killed my girls at um, the corner said my girls were dead at 9.15. 
Um, <laughs> they found him, I want to say, around 1 o'clock. He left there. Um, he went to... Um, to Grossers. He went and... and um, went to we, his... We're just going to a commercial break. Okay. We're going to a commercial break right quick. Okay. okay. Yeah, we're going to go into a commercial break. Uh, oh, she's still, she's still a grandmama. She's still a grandma. <laughs> she got to get the babies together. <laughs> I'm on the so, phone. Girl, I understand completely. So we're going to go ahead and get into a quick commercial break. And uh, we'll, we'll be back. Peachy Tea Time is for the culture. Tune in every Friday for Peachy Talks Edition. Where the misses and pulley show crime in our black community and discuss love and relationships. Special surprise pop-up guests. Tune in each and every Friday. Check out the flyer for showtimes. Peachy Tea Time is for the culture. Tune in every Saturday for the weekend spot. Where the misses show crime in our black community and showcase independent artists. Special surprise guests for the hottest interviews. Tune in each and every Saturday. Check out the flyer for showtimes. y'all we are back we are back we are back um we're gonna go ahead and get into um a little music video so that you know otisha can go ahead and get herself together and stuff uh you know how we are over here we're very patient with our guests because you know my show isn't five or ten minutes (laughs) so we try to be very very patient with our guests um my show is late as well at night so it does you know take some time and some things be going on so we got a uh, song coming up coming up shortly and uh we're gonna get into another flyer here we go peachy tea time is for the culture tune into peachy tea time each and every monday on Mondays, the misses cover crime in our black community to bring awareness and bring healness to each and every one of you. Surprise guests and so much fun and laughter. Tune in and enjoy this movement. I told my mama we gon' be straight, please don't cry Yo son, he gon' make it, he ain't stopping till he shy I may fall up on my ass, so the other will never die I know that you don't feel my pain, but you can see it in my eyes My only other mother flying high in the sky She left this world too early, that made me die inside I feel her all around me, so I know she by my side I know that guy got a new angel right by his side my feelings locked up, I threw the key away Just so you don't slam me up in my back any day I told my brothers we gon' be strong, we gon' be great Beating the laws, all these niggas do is fucking hell I had to go a different route so I can make way Make sure my family strong, I had to find a way But I gotta watch my back, I don't trust anyone They be the closest one that's gone with the gun And I know you don't know 
No more pain, no more sorry Know that I'm a sinner praying to the Lord above me Can he keep my sanity? It may be the death for me Deleting all my social, I don't need nothing distracting me Always making songs, cause this shit be my therapy I know I'm on love, but it's something I don't need Cause if it's time I give it out, I don't give back a thing Mama, mama, please don't cry, we gon' be alright Staying up late, cause I can't ever waste no time Writing all these lyrics, I've been putting in over time Sucking up and on, I've been trying to find a lie When I'm up, y'all gon' notice my grind It in my life, I remember those times Sorry, I'm sorry, but I'm on a different time Now I care about my heart and I care about my mind Oh, oh, oh. Thank you, text me on my phone, asking how I'm feeling I've been chilling in the rain right for the stars and the ceiling Passing all my money, I've been trying to get these riches oh, oh, oh. Hoping I can find my soul Hoping you don't leave me alone Hoping I stay up on the road Whoa. I'm flying across the world Wishing you was with me Motivation going down So I hope that you can feel me I don't get no fuck about no haters on my back track I just want my parents in the hill So they can realize And they can kick back And I'm praying to a lot Hoping I get that I don't want them in no pain No more But that glass can be half in Be half no more. Mama, mama, please don't cry We gon' be alright Staying up late cause I can't ever waste no time Writing all these lyrics, I've been putting in over time Sucking up and on, I've been trying to find a lie When I'm up, y'all gon' notice my grind It in my life, I remember those times Sorry, I'm sorry, but I'm on a different time Now I care about my heart and I care about my mind All right, we are back, we are back, we are back. Um, I want to get into Jasmine's um, statement that she made, and I'm going to go ahead and bring Otisha back up just as well. Hey, boo, we see you, girl. We see you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Otisha? Can you hear me now? Okay, Otisha can't hear us. Come down, come down, and then come back up again. Come down and come back up. Yep. Okay, I don't know why we had an issue. Um, I'm going to kick her out. And then hopefully when she come back up, y'all will be able to hear her. But Jason, Jasmine, hey, Jasmine. That's my bonus baby. That's my bonus baby. I love Jasmine. Now, Jason Jasmine says she was jealous of Jasmine because at one point he probably loved her more than the woman that birthed him. How you you think that's logical to come up with? I do. I do. That shows logic. I mean, I see I can see where where that come from. And I get it to to her having that demeanor, you know. Because at the end of the day, where she can come from, I guess, as a mother on his side is like, well, my son has been taken away due to the fact that he couldn't deal with not having her anymore, yada, yada, yada. Like those those little thought processes. But again, that's still a very, you know, uh, self-centered, a very uh, selfish mindset on, on both behalves. Mm-hmm. Feel me? Like love isn't singular. Like it, it isn't. It isn't one way. You know what I'm saying? Love is a love is always left, right, up, down, 360, 480, 220, 120, 30, 40. Like whatever that may look like, love goes always. And you can get it from any and everybody. You know what I'm saying? But the fact that you 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 feel internally that one person's love only belongs to you is asinine. Like that 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 don't make sense. You feel me? Especially, especially when you have children. Right. Like, though, like as an adult, I have to realize and understand that m- the the way that the 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 mother of my children love me is completely different on how they love how I love my how she loves my children. Right. You know what I mean. Mm-hmm. So I'm never gonna I'm never gonna get jealous over how you love my children because I know you love me a whole complete different way, and completely. that also goes with everybody else: your mother, your brothers, your sisters, your like your peoples and even down to your best friends. Like right. 
You know what I mean? But some people can't comprehend that because they might not have been taught that as they were growing up right. or shown right. that as, as they was growing up. So when I look at it now right. and, I, and, I, and I hear it and I try to process it as, as just me and who I am, I can see that that mother probably didn't do that for her children to show that I love you all individually and specifically. You know what I'm saying? So that person can learn to love that same way when they get older. Okay. Um, I, I want to put up a comment. I want to put up a comment. Um, I usually make a decision if I want to put comments up. Okay, Otisha. Uh, but this comment I'm going to put up because it's probably other people that's thinking this way just as well. Okay. Do you know Natalie Purdy? I don't. Jason, do you know Natalie Purdy? I do not. I don't know Natalie Purdy either. So, but I want to put up her comment. This is what it says. Prayers for Otisha Kardash and the children. I pray that she can find the healing needed to cut ties with the parents because there is nothing healthy or genuine about them. And I'm sorry, but I disagree with this comment i disagree um mainly because there's children involved no matter what them them kids grandparents no matter what there's something that we can never take away and if they have not done nothing to otisha because like otisha already said they didn't kill her kids her daughters their son did. So that's why I'm kind of, I, I'm just a little confused about that. And then that's well, not, know, that wasn't what God would want of Otisha either. There you go. There you go. It's not there godly. Go. Right. You got to forgive. God, God is the one that handles all of it at the end of the day. And he asks that you forgive whether you want to or, or not. You know what I'm saying? Once you do that, there's a lot of things that starts to heal inside of you. Now, what I will say is this, though, as a community and as a as a culture, we tend to start swiping things under the rug, like disassociating ourselves from pain and causing more trauma for other family members down the road, whether you want to be with them or not. Or like you said, children are involved at this point, but you have to have a space of forgiveness and then work within that. Now, if God is telling you that you need to depart and no longer to associate with each other, that's fine and dandy. But you do need to go through that process of healing and forgiveness. Right. So it's up to the parents to decide, you know, whether they control or work with each other. But once you have children involved that are adolescent, yeah, you have to. There's nothing you can do about that. You know what I'm saying? Cause you can't keep the child from his other side of the family due to the, the actions that his parent did. You know? In my mind, that's, that's how I feel personally. You know what I mean? What do you feel um, about that, Otisha? Because we got some folks in the comments, not just um, Natalie, um, like, but other people agreeing with her. Like, like I said before, um, I have a relationship with um, with his with his father and his wife. I don't have one with his mother, and I don't think I'll ever have one with her because. Um, like I said, I believe she fueled the flame. I believe she fueled the flame. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And I also believe that her intentions towards my daughter were malice from the beginning. And my other problem I have with her is that she um, she has taken me to <sighs> she tried to put <clears throat> a restraining order on me maybe like two months ago. Um, I saw her at court. She petitioned me for visitation for the kids. Um, so we had to go to court. Um, when I saw her at court, this was the first time I had ever seen this lady in 16 months since my girls have been in the grave. Um, so, you know, it wasn't good. And I said some things to her, um, because I'm a grieving mother and I'm mad that her son, mm -hmm killed mm -hmm. my daughters yeah. so i said some things to her so she tried to put a restraining order on me but we went to magistrate court for the restraining order the judge asked me what was going on and i told her 
And the judge looked at her and wanted to know, was she serious? Mm. She out her mind. She was like, she was making statements to you. Um, she was not threatening you. She was like, what she said was a statement. It wasn't a threat. And I'm not putting a restraining order on her. And please leave her alone. Wow. But the, the dad and the stepmom, you don't have any issues with. But his mom, there's no, no reconciling, no nothing. With her. I don't really bother with her. Like, I just she don't see the kids either. Be. Right, that should be. She don't see the um, kids. We're we're in court now. She's trying to get um visitation. She had to get a guardian at Lightum. Um, I don't know if you are aware of what that is, but that's somebody who that is hired to look into your life because the judge asked me why I didn't want my grandchildren around her. I told them first and foremost, I don't want her feeding any bad seeds into my kids' heads that are already there from them seeing her son kill my daughters. And second of all, I don't want my kids around her because she's married to somebody who just got out of prison for killing somebody. Oh. Mm. Wow. Do your thing, young lady, man. Make sure you protect them babies. Yes, protect them babies. And yeah, you, you yeah, definitely cut off ties with her. Okay, what you are. At all sure. costs. At all yeah. costs. Do what definitely. you got to do. Definitely. But until you see fit and you see that, you know, you need to cut ties off with dad too, then I think that will have to be your decision. You know what I'm right. saying? Um, let's get into another video. Let's get into another video. Here we go. Disturbing news out of Lexington County. That's right, Darcy, and I'm Andrea Mock. Very sad update now from officials in Lexington County. We'll tell you what we know. Three people are dead after a shooting earlier today. Now, the Sheriff's Department did confirm that the suspected gunman was, in fact, found dead from a self-inflicted gunshot wound in his parked car in Richland County later today. Now, no word on how he was connected to the victims. The victims were sisters in Lexington County. The coroner there has now identified the victims as 20-year-old Jamie Green and 25-year-old Jasmine Green. The shooting happened this morning at a home in the 200 block of Woodcote Drive, right near Highway 321 in Gaston. Detectives spoke with neighbors near the home who reported hearing gunshots early this morning at about nine o'clock. The sheriff's department is continuing to investigate tonight. Now, friends and family in a Lexington County community remember two sisters. Jamie and Jasmine Green were shot and killed at home on Woodcott Drive on Monday. They leave behind three children. Our Madeline Stewart joins us live from the vigil tonight. Madeline, you had a chance to speak with a family member of the sisters. Joe, I caught up with their cousin Kelly earlier today, and she says that the family is trying to stay strong amid this tragedy. Our family is, is bent, but we're not broken. Um, we recognize now that for those sweet babies, um, we will stand together and we will protect them and we will love them fiercely and we will love them the way their mamas would love them and raise them to be just amazing humans. The shooting has left neighbors shaken up on Woodcote Drive. They're left speechless after the suspected gunman shot and killed the two young women. They describe the neighborhood as a quiet place and a close-knit community. Try to watch out for each other. Neighbor Chris Linenberger tells me he woke up Monday morning to gunshots. He says he immediately walked over to Jamie and Jasmine's house. I just saw all the police and emergency vehicles. Um, I saw the, you know, pink comforter covering one of the young ladies up. He says events like this aren't common on Woodcote Drive. And it was just disheartening. I mean, it's just something that doesn't happen. And you pray that it never does. Chris's daughter Haley went to school with some of the sister's siblings. She and her dad are still in shock and say the family is in their thoughts. It's a loss for words with it. It really is. I just can't, you know, and we just keep thinking about, you know, the mom, the dad, the, the daughters, and, and, and the, the babies, and, and the brothers. 
Well, the vigil started just a minute or so ago and cars are lined up on every street in the area and people are still pouring in. Um, Kelly, the sister's cousin, told me that the sisters were very well known in the West Columbia community where they're originally from in Casey and here in uh, Gadsden. And um, she said they just had such a huge impact on the community and the family is so thankful for all of the support that they've received since Monday reporting in Gaston. All right, we are back, we are back, we are back. Now, Jasmine had the two boys. What's going on with Jamie's daughter? Because you, um, you have all three, correct? I have all three. I had temporary custody of all three, but um, as of Today is um, Wednesday. As of last, one day last week, my mind's so bad. <laughs> um, my okay. lawyer, um, I want to shout her out, Shaquana Coutinho. Um, she called me. Um, she's going through something very tragic. Her her niece was just killed by her boyfriend. Um, oh. So um, prayers out to her family. But she called me and was like, we, need, we had an emergency court hearing. Um, when we got to court, um, the judge asked me a lot of questions about my life and the kids. And the next thing I knew, she was telling me I had full custody of my grandboys. Mm, amen. 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 Uh, I know that was a blessing sent down from my girls. Yes. And from Shaquana niece. I just feel like sometimes... A tragedy have to happen for something happy to happen. It's like a, a swap out for some reason. I, I don't, I'm never going to understand it, but. All right, yeah. With the rain always come sunshine. All the time. Um, with Tylee, um, when Jamie passed away, custody went to Tylee's father, but Tylee's father is incarcerated. So. Um, his mom is protesting the custody to go to me. Um, she's saying that she'll take Tylee and for court reasons, I can't really speak on what me and her going through, but everybody knows that Jamie would want Tylee with me. Um, Definitely. I was in the delivery room when she had Tylee. Um, that's back when COVID was real bad and they only would let one person back there. And I told her, I was like, you don't want Tylee's father back here. And she was like, no, he don't know how to deliver no baby. She was like, you had six of us. Right. You know, what to do. <laughs> so we stayed back there all day. Tylee came out. She looked at me and I looked at her. I was the first person she saw. And the nurse looked at both of us. And she was like, she was like, she know you. And I was like, yeah, I'm her grandma. <laughs> And I never forget the nurse shaking her head at me. She said, no. She said, it's something else. And to this day, she could be riding in her car seat. And I turn my head to look and see what she's doing. And I still see that look on her face Aww. from when she came by her mama. And I know what that look is now. She trusts me. Mm. She know I'm a part of her mama. And she gave me that same look today. Um, so I just wanted to run that back to everybody that's out there listening because that's a lot of people wonder that, you know, as far as what would happen with my kids if something was to happen to me. So right. being that the two boys, Jasmine's two boys, and the young man, Tyrone's, two boys. Both their parents is gone. They're both gone. So both of them went to Otisha, which is Jasmine's mom. Okay. Now the door, Jamie's daughter, she still have a living father. I still don't understand that right there because he was locked up, I guess. It seemed like they she, she still would have just came to you. Right. And that's it. 
you know, is he serving a long time, period of time? I'm not sure. Um, he doesn't call and, and talk to me and we never, he hasn't, I haven't spoken to him since Jamie passed away. Um, so I'm not sure. Um, and like I said, for like court reasons, I'm not really allowed to talk about the situation with him. But okay. um, one thing I do know is that he knows himself that Jamie would want me to have Tylee and that, you know, Tyler belongs with with us. Um, now I can give my opinion, and if I thought that, if I thought that he was that dad, that dad that that I would have around her at the moment, I would I would here here's your child. Exactly, you're that dad to her. I want you. I want I want you in her life. I I still want him in his life, but I. I need him to get to that place where I can say, okay, I trust leaving her with him. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And, and I, you and Jamie had a special bond. Correct. We did. Um, a lot of people, you'll see in social media where a lot of people like, oh, Jamie was her favorite. Um, it wasn't that Jamie was my favorite, but when you have multiple children, um, I don't care what nobody says. You love those kids in multiple ways. That's um, correct. It's something correct. special about each one of them that you love. Yeah. And some of them will attach themselves from you and some of them will detach themselves from you. All of your kids are going to be different. You you never have the same child. Right. And Jamie was just, she was just a special one. And my other kids knew it also because they loved it just like I did. Like, we always said Jamie was our protector. And I believe that God gave her to me to push me through life, to protect our family. And I believe that her job was done here. And he called her and her sister home. Mm. Yeah. Um, Otis just put something in the private chat. I want you to read it. Um, Girl, that the support is here for you tonight. Now, my mom, she's watching. Uh, we call her Mama Peach. And she wants to know how old is the grandchildren? Um, my grandsons, uh Grayson is going to be um six June the sixteenth. Uh Major will be five. We were just talking about this earlier because they was in the living room. Um they was in the living room um, uh, telling me their ages earlier. So Major is about to be five, and Tylee will be three in June, June 29th. Wow. They're very young. Very, very young. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get into this last clip, and then we're going to get into the tribute. So let's get into this last clip. Oh, here we go. Marks one month since the murders of Jamie and Jasmine Green, sisters that were. Bro, marks one month since the murders of Jamie and Jasmine Green, sisters that were found shot in their front yard. They leave behind three young children that are in the care of their mother, Otisha Mickens. I'm Alan Stewart, checked in with Otisha and Madeline. How is she holding up? Joe, I asked her how she's doing and she said she's just doing. She says she's still numb, but what's getting her by day by day is prayer, her grandchildren, and starting a conversation about domestic violence. When I look at my grandchildren, they get me through the day because I know I'm all that they have and they're all I have. Jasmine and Jamie Green were gunned down in their front yard nearly one month ago, leaving behind three young children. And, um, what the last minutes of their life were standing about, protecting each other and being a team. The only suspect, Jasmine's former boyfriend, was found dead from a self-inflicted gunshot wound later that day. According to the Lexington County Sheriff's Department, Durham pled guilty to third-degree assault and battery in 2016. 
He completed domestic violence counseling in 2017. And just this March, Lexington County deputies were called to the Greens' home after reports of a domestic dispute. Jasmine is listed as the victim in both records. Now the sister's mother, Otisha, is speaking out. And I also feel like their death wasn't in vain. I think their death goes go save millions of women and men. She says sharing the warning signs of domestic violence on Facebook Live is helping her process the tragedy. And I know that the lives will save somebody. I couldn't save my girls, but maybe somebody out there I could save. Otisha hopes telling Jamie and Jasmine's story will help others who might be in similar situations. People who are scared to realize what they're going through, they're looking and they're feeling what I'm talking about and they're feeling my hurt and my pain. Otisha wants to continue going live weekly on Facebook and she also tells me she's planning a podcast and a foundation in honor of Jamie and Jasmine. And of course, we'll keep you updated online at WIST. All right, all right, all right, all right. Now, are you still doing your podcast? Um, like I had talked with you about earlier, um, I had stopped it, like I said, due to um, legal things that I had going on. Um, since I have full custody of the boys now, I can go ahead and proceed um, somewhat with what I want to get started with. Um, I just needed to get my legal stuff behind because... Um, when you're going through legal things, especially with children, people try to find anything they can. Um, they'll pull up an old conversation you had with somebody and try to try to make it seem like you're crazy or something. So um, doing that, I had to just like watch um, how I was moving. Um, but now that that's dying down, um, I'm about to um, start it back up and I will be doing it um, by myself. But I will um, have guests and um, go certain places where um, the number of criminal domestic violence cases are up. Um, mm -hmm. Just a lot of networking that I have planned to do. A lot of um, a lot of reaching out. Um, a lot of advocating. Okay. Okay. Now I want to go ahead and put up your cash app. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day. You had six, two of them is gone, and now you gained three more. Right. So the cash app that I'm looking at, it says Otisha Kardash. So that's the one? Um. Yeah, I usually just use my phone number. I put my phone number out there because I have a, a well-known phone number because I do hair. Uh -huh. um, so it don't okay. bother me if people call my phone because I know how to hang my phone up. <laughs> she know how to hang her phone up, y'all. So they can use <laughs> they can use your um phone number. Right. You know, you can use your cash phone app. from Cash App also. Okay. Um I didn't know how to put a picture up. I'm not computer savvy at all. You gotta forgive me. <laughs> it is but okay. When they look at it, I'm I'm the girl with the black shirt on. It'll say Otisha Kardashian and I have on a black shirt. Um and another thing about the Cash App, people oh. Not that I, I'm not going to say I don't care because it bothers me, but to to raise children, the first thing it takes is love. That's the first thing it takes to raise kids. But the second thing that it takes to raise kids is money. You got to take care of those kids. And I had, I, 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 before my girls passed away, like I've had my salon for seven years. So... Wow. <laughs> well, we got, we, look we like the hand clap over here <laughs> thank y'all so awesome. much and i i thank god i thank god every day for blessing me with that and 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 the and the people who i owe most for my hair salon is my girls mm. they would push me and push me and push me to do hair Cause they saw something in me that I didn't. I'm their mom, and they saw something in me that I didn't. And they got their friends to come get their hair done. They would get their hairs done. They they built up my salon, our salon. So when they passed away, 
I changed the salon name over to their name. So instead of Kardash Flow by Otisha, it's now Kardash Flow by Jazz and Jamie. Because I owe everything I have to the Amen. Lord and to Amen. them. Amen. 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 Wow. Uh, let's go to Tip Good. Hey, Tip. What's going on, girl? She said, until a person has experienced grief from the murder of a child, they'll never understand. It's an ongoing mental battle. 13 years later, and my heart is still broken. Otisha, surround yourself with mothers that understand and can strengthen you and only receive from individuals that can add to your peace and well-being. I love Tip. I love Tip. I really do. I've been on Tiffany for a very long time. Uh, I'm still trying to get her on the show just as well. I'm trying to get her on because she has a story to tell just as well, you know. Um, so we're coming to the end of the show. Look, she said, hey. <laughs> we're coming to the end of the show. Um, every time I have a family that comes on, I always make sure that I do a tribute for them. And it's something that you get to keep forever i'm gonna email it to you after the show and i tell everybody oh tisha i tell everybody this is the moment that you want to grab your tissue if you ain't cried yet if you ain't went and borrowed some tissue from somebody just yet this is the time this is the time so um but i love you oh tisha i love you i love you i love you uh, we're not gonna we're not gonna end the show. We're gonna come back up, but um, I just wanted to say that to you. You know, I love you. I really, really do, and I pray for you. I pray, I pray, I pray for you. So here we go. I hope you like it. I hope you enjoy it. This is a tribute to Jamie and Jasmine. Here we go. <laughs> All I hear is raindrops falling from the rooftop. Oh, baby, tell me why'd you have to go? Cause this pain I feel it won't go away. And today I'm officially missing you. I thought that from this heartache I could escape. But I've run it long enough to know There ain't no way And today I'm officially missing you Ooh, Can nobody do me like you I said every little thing you do Hey baby, say it stays on Tisha get herself together. I gotta get herself together. Jason, say something, please. I can't. I'm trying to hold myself together. That's why I ain't look up the whole time. I know like, you like you, you, know ain't you ain't on mute. <laughs> you, I didn't already cracked a couple times throughout this whole uh, this whole episode, man. And for me, it it's it's um it's eye opening. You know what I mean? And where I'm gonna come from is from the male perspective. Um. And kind of like put out the calling for the male agenda, like to look out for our brothers. You dig? Like your boys are hurting. Don't let how he walk around treating his girl, his children, his people, even himself go. 
it's time that we all really start coming together and being there for one another. It is not gay to say, I love you, bro. Hug your brother. Talk to your bro. Like, it is not impossible to, to try to understand what they're going through. Right. The more people that can connect with us can allow us to start really fixing and healing some of the spaces that were looked over as a youth. Right. We we can only blame our mothers and our fathers for so long. After a while, we have to start taking accountability for ourselves, because at the end of the day, they can't live our life. They just brought us here. That's it. And that's all. And that's all through God's graces that we came here. You know what I'm saying? When we look at the sheer fact of that, the I ain't gonna go that route. But we we brought ourselves like we're we're here now. Once you're here now, and, and after the age of six or seven, and you're able to make conscious decisions for yourself, you start to choose what's the, what's what's right and what's wrong. And then there's just influences from there, right? And your parents are only there to keep you safe, not even to to help your influences. They're just to say like, no, that's not the right thing. Stay safe. And then your friends and other people that are with you on a daily basis that see who you are in and out are the ones there to help with your influences and your and your understanding. And the more that we don't allow, the more that we don't help our brothers correct themselves, even in public, we have things like this. You know what I mean? Like th- there's a lot that a, a couple pe- there's a lot that a, a lot of people could have done for this young man to help curve the mindset. You feel me? But no one did anything. They allowed this man to be who he was and, and just hope that it would change. But it didn't. And then it didn't change. And he ended up taking two lives and then his own. And then not only that, now these 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 children, like there's three, there's three beautiful children. Beautiful, beautiful children. We're gonna go ahead and bring up Tisha. We're gonna bring her back up right now. So man, I'm just I'm just saying, man, like start start to really be there for one another. There is so much in this world that is against us, all the way down to the shit that we uh, air and water are practically free, and that is contaminating us. You know okay. what I'm saying? So why so why add on other shit, man? Just be there for each other as much as possible. And help one another, like you said. Help one another. All right, I do Tisha. You want to say anything? I know I, that was hard. Yeah, thank you so much. That was so beautiful. Beautiful. Your girls are so gorgeous. gorgeous. Thank you. And it's not, and it's not even, it's not even like me looking at them as female. Like the energy and how you spoke about them, like yes. shows exactly how beautiful they are. They were. You know what I mean? And they still are in heaven. And they still are. You know, so congratulations to you, thank and thank you, you and, like for doing all that you do. Thank and you. I want to say this: the way, like Jason said, the way you spoke today upon them, um, the way you spoke upon all your kids, the way you spoke upon your grandkids, I could just imagine how they were <laughs> with their kids. You see what I'm saying? One of the most important things to me. Um, and raising children to make sure that they go on the straight and narrow path is love. Oh. Like you got to show your kids love. You have to you know. They say, you know, you never know if you walk out the door, you might not make it back in the house, you know, but I'm not saying it because of that. I'm saying it just because when a person know that they is loved, and somebody is depending on them because of their love, not because of no money, not for a place to live, but because of their love. I promise you they're going to think twice before they do these devilish, evilish things. They're going to think about, this is going to break my mama if I get caught doing something like this. This is going to break my daddy if I decide to do this, knowing that he told me that this could bring me down that path. That's because of the love that the parent fed into them. Am I right, Otisha? You're more than right. Like, <laughs> summed it all up. I mean, all it takes is a little bit of love. Like, yeah. love will take you places money won't. 
Man, all day. But she talked about the love throughout the show, the love that she has, and I'm talking about Atisha, that Atisha has for her kids. And then she mentioned the love that the kids, the girls have for their kids. But baby, Atisha done taught all six of them to love each other. Mm-hmm. Because Jamie said, uh-uh. You will not do my sister like this. We going down together. I'm sure they didn't know that this was going to happen to them. More than sure. But she still said, I'm riding with my sister. You would not put your hands on my sister again. This was a lie. This was a lot. I don't know Otisha from a campaign. I do not know her. But when I tell you your story, your daughter's story touched my heart. I had to bring you here. And I'm thankful that you accepted the invitation. I'm thank thankful you. you was vulnerable on here. And I thank you for taking care of them babies. Because you could have said they ain't mine. Let them go with other folks. I can't do it. You <laughs> didn't do that. All these kids here, my six and my three great, all of them bust out of me. And it's my job to take care of them. That part. And that's what I'm going to do to the day I die. And I tell my grandson, because every time I go somewhere, he cry. And I tell him, let me tell you something. Let's get this straight right now. When I walk out that door, I'm always come back. And if you don't see me no more, if you don't ever see me again, I went to go be with your mama. But until then, I'm always be with you. Yeah. Well, I'm over here shaking a little bit. Jesus. Just there to shout out to God. Shout out to God, mama. Shout, shout out to God. <laughs> You know what I mean? Shout out to God. Um, that's something we say over here a lot. Shout out to God. <laughs> um, I always let my guests in the show. I always let them end the show. Um, I thank you so much once again for coming on the show. I really hope and pray that we can stay in contact with each other. Yep. Just well. Uh, one of the young ladies tip. She said that she felt that you should surround yourself with women also that has been through what you've been through. Right. And with that being said, I do know women, um, and there's a group um, that has been through what you've been through. And I would love to introduce you to them. Um, they are very, very good down to earth group of women. And, you know, me and you will talk about it more um, after the broadcast because I want you to stay on just for about five minutes after I end the broadcast so I can talk to you for a second. Um, I want you to let everyone know where they can find you at online on social media just in case um, another platform reaches out and wants you to tell their story, your the baby story, your girl story once again, okay? Because that's what it's about keeping their names alive, you know, it wasn't in vain. You're going to make sure, and we all can tell that, you're going to make sure that you represent these ladies very well, very, very well. Okay, so, um, Jason, is there anything you want to say? Man, uh, you guys already know. What I want her to say. Go ahead. Absolutely. You guys already know, man. Don't come looking for me. I ain't nowhere to be found. I ain't doing nothing special. But please do go support Otisha Kardash. She has something uh, to say, not only just to continue the awareness of her daughters, but the the conversation of domestic violence. We all we all know someone, you know what I'm saying, or we all heard something. So this is the time that we you know fully equip ourselves and understand and get the knowledge to help ourselves become a stronger united front you know what i'm saying we are we are divided when we don't do this together and when we see people hurting and don't have an understanding of self or is aware of self then that is when we all start to fall and crumble so 
with that, when she gets back on her feet with doing the podcast and, and also coming together to advocate for domestic violence, please, please, please tap in, please share and, and do all that you can. All right. Um, there's another question in the comment. Um, Tip said, is the children in therapy? Um, they were in the beginning. Um, the first therapist I took them to, like, the only thing she was interested in was them being on time. If they were late, um, she have a fit. So I felt like you're not helping my children. You're just worried about, are they on time? And you, you're not seeing the big picture of like, we're going through stuff. Our time is lost. Uh -huh. Like I, 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 at first I had no understanding of time anymore. Like time stood still to me. So I took them out of there. Um, they had a really good therapist. Um, she moved away. I don't know what happened to her. Then they got another therapist. Uh, it it was just she was just taking them back there had them scribble scrabbling on paper look like and bringing them back out I, I just I don't know I just feel like maybe I need to give it a little bit more time span and let them go back to a therapist I found somebody who comes highly recommended and I've, I've called and reached out to them so we're okay. gonna see how that okay um two more Two more, because my mama would have a fit if I read her comment. <laughs> uh, Bridget, Bridget Hunter said, your girls are so beautiful. Jasmine looks like a cabbage patch doll. Just beautiful. <laughs> and Mama P said, this mother is a loving woman. I thank God for her sharing, for sharing your children's love with all of us tonight. I can feel the love you have for your family. May God continue to bless you all. That's my Thank mama, you. girl. That's my mama. That's my mama. Peach. <laughs> Thank you, mama. Now, she said, Thank you, mama. <laughs> now, this is what I want you to end the show with. I'm going to pull me and Jason down. Uh, we do this with every guest. Um, you have a total of six children, and two of them has transitioned. So you have four left. Those are the ones that I want you to talk to at this moment. Mm -hmm. Your four, not your grandbabies, your four children that you have left. Um, I know you've been dealing with a lot losing your two daughters, you mm -hmm. know, and, you know, sometimes maybe, you know, some, uh, maybe the other kids get pushed aside sometimes because you just, you know, you're soaking in everything. So what do you want to say to them at this moment? Here we go. Um, Lateria, Troy, Josiah, Summer. I raised y'all all to love each other. I know we're going through the hardest time of our life right now. And I know it seems like we've fallen apart. And I know it seems like we'll never be the same. But Mimi and Jazz will want us to stick together. They want us to keep the love that I planted inside of each one of you going. They want y'all to be the super aunties and the super uncles y'all are. And they want y'all to keep going on with y'all life. Troy, they want you to go on to college. Pete, they want you to live your life. Josiah, they want you in the military. And somebody, I want you to get out of school. Y'all know what Mimi would be saying. Y'all know what she would be saying. She'll be fussing at each one of y'all. Y'all got to finish y'all life. Don't worry about us. Y'all take care of mama. Y'all make sure our kids taken care of. And one day in heaven, y'all let's go see each other again. OTF. <laughs> Only the family. All I hear is raindrops. 
falling from a rooftop Oh baby, tell me why'd you have to go Cause this pain I feel it won't go away And today I'm officially missing I thought that from this heartache I could escape But I've run it long enough to know There ain't no way And today I'm officially missing you Ooh, Can nobody do me like you I'm a fish. <laughs>